In all this time I've opened up to you, I've opened up my voice and just really shown you who I really am. And that's not an AI voice, all right? Let's get it over with. So let's get started on this video. Here we go. What is the most embarrassing thing you could admit about yourself online, but never in real life? Story 1. My girlfriend and I got this nice hotel room in a major downtown city for a mutual friend's wedding. Open bar, reception, blur, till it's time to head upstairs for some spicy time. I poop myself as I slide the room key. I say, I'll just be a minute as I walk to the bathroom. Panic. I remove my boxer briefs, clean myself up best I can without running a shower. I hide the poopy wet underwear under the garbage can liner and compose myself. I return to my girlfriend and she's all about jumping me. My tuxedo pants are being earnestly taken off and she sees I'm without underwear. She thinks it's for her and responds quite positively. She can never know. Those poor maids. Update 1. Girlfriend became my wife nine years ago. She still doesn't know? Oh, wow. I bet she tells that story to her girlfriends in a very giggly and romantic way. If she only knew the truth. Maybe it doesn't end in divorce. Story 2. I'm a 37-year-old female virgin. I've never had a boyfriend. Edit to weed out repeat questions. It's mostly on me since I'm overweight and have body issues that prevent me from being okay enough to share it with someone else. It's also part no one that I know has ever been interested. But here's the good news, gang. I just asked my Magic 8 Ball if I would ever get laid, and it's stuck pretty solidly on the line between all signs point to yes and yes. Guys, Magic 8 Ball caps lock is never wrong. Edit 2. Okay, I try to be a cool netizen and respond to everyone, but this has been going on for hours and I'm going to sleep. Thank you to everyone who had positive messages. And a special thank you to all of you who were helpful enough to point out that I should lose weight, and that whatever I'm currently doing to lose weight is wrong, and that whatever I have tried in the past to lose weight was wrong, and that I just don't understand how to lose weight, and that I shouldn't take my disability into account, and that I'm just not trying hard enough, and that you know my body better than I do, and how I'm a big fatty despite the fact that I was never asking for any advice. I was just honestly answering the question as to why I was still a virgin. Where would I be without you kind souls to remind me I'm fat? Oh. Wait, I have a mirror, and that mirror doesn't treat me like a jerkwad. Thanks, mirror. We don't know the threads that are part of this story, but I'm sure the rule of thumb is, if she didn't ask, don't tell. I'm quite certain she didn't ask for any weight loss advice. For the people that want to lose weight, everybody's path is different. A regimen that works for one person is not going to work for the next person. I feel sorry she got ambushed with all this... Advice. Story 3. My doctor thinks I may have Asperger's. Given that my family seems to think Asperger's and mentally challenged are synonyms, I'm not sure I'm going to ever follow up on it or mention it to them, for that matter. Edit. I should have mentioned my age. I'm in my early 30s, so this isn't so much about my parents finding out from my doctor. I have a large, tight-knit family, parents, many siblings, and huge extended family. I can't tell one person without everyone else finding out. Everyone knows everything about everyone. There's almost a no-secrets policy with us. And while I think in the end they'd all be supportive, it'll be a huge hassle having to teach everyone about it and explain that I haven't suddenly become Forrest Gump. Not confirming the Asperger's just seems like the simpler route. Edit 2. For the record, my family aren't terrible people, just misinformed about it, like many other Americans. So let's stop talking about my mama. Were the Yamama jokes flying fast and furious? It's so sad that they could be really supportive, but he'd have to wade through a whole river of nonsense just to get through. I think it's kind of sad that he feels he has to suffer through this alone. Does he have any friends that he can confide in? Is he in a relationship? Story 4. When hiding during hide-and-seek, I used to wet my pants from excitement that the game was about to start. 
It might still do so to this day. I haven't played hide-and-seek in a long time, but I've used this to my advantage to actually pee when I'm in a public restroom. Just start counting down from five works like a charm. Edit. <laughs> Can't believe I lost my gold genity because of this. Thank you very much, though. I hope it made you chuckle and made you want to make the best of a bad situation. Story 5. Throw away here. Eleven and a half years ago, my father passed in the middle of the night, probably due to a burst cerebral aneurysm. There was no effort to discover the true cause because there really wasn't any point to it. It was over in about 15 minutes. I'm a single child, so it was me and my mom left. The next year or so, I would get up during the middle of the night and quietly go to my mom's room and stand near her bed and watch her chest if she's breathing, essentially if she's alive. I would stand there motionless in the pitch black night for like three to five minutes until I was sure she's okay, and then I would go back to bed. I was really scared of losing her, too. Edit 1. Thanks for the kind words. Not that I'm embarrassed about this, but it's not something I would lightheartedly share. Edit 2. Wow. Internet hugs to all of you kind, caring strangers. Story 6. I have these intense and weird-as-hell visions in my head for certain thoughts. Think JD from Scrubs. Like earlier today, my mom and I were heading to a family reunion that's about an 11-hour drive. She was talking about something when she realized that she forgot something. She said, Curse it! Just buy it! I immediately imagined the Wicked-style musical number including dancers in costumes with these lines. Did I bring the shampoo? No! Did I bring the sheets? No! Did I bring the pillow? No! Did I remember to bring my favorite blue jeans? Hell no! Lead actress collapses and cries, Should I go back, or should I just forget? Without these items, I just cannot bear. Loud orchestra clash and the dancers jump up. So, curse it! Just buy it! This all happened within a few seconds in my head and was quite unexpected. I would never tell anyone I think like this. There are some people that can just think in these very weird ways. Have you ever had a dream and then when you woke up you really couldn't get the image out of your head? I've had that with music. I would wake up with some sort of tune in my head and I just had to get it down. I've always been thankful that there are music apps on my iPhone and iPad that I can go to and just jot those things down so they're not rattling around in my head all day. Before iPads, I was just haunted by those songs. And when I finally got to a place where I could put them down, they weren't exactly what I remembered. And they'd always come out wrong. Story 7. I'm married to someone who is a virgin and super naive and innocent when we met. She has no idea how terrible I am in the sack and thinks it's normal that guys can't last more than a couple minutes max. It's bad. Edit. A lot of folks assuming she talks to her friends about spicy time and knows, sadly for her, I feel pretty safe saying that's not the case. She doesn't have female friends she's close with. She spends most of her time at home with the children and hates going anywhere without me. But that's a whole different set of issues we won't go into. And when I say she was naive slash innocent, that's an understatement. Her parents were raised Amish before leaving the community, and they raised her like Amish, only with electricity. Other than that, some good things for me slash us to try. Thanks, all. Story 8. The first time I had spicy time, I ended up smashing her belly button. I was just getting my groove on and grunting, and I hear, Inoculi, that's my belly button. Instant boner killer. Didn't have spicy time again for two years. She was... Very, very overweight. Her name was Betsy. Edit. Also, to set the scene, she was on her back, but her belly hung low. For all I know, I could have started in the right place, but with a bad thrust, just ended up there and kept going. Story 9. Sometimes when I see a hot lady on the street, I take as many mental pictures of her body. Then before I go to bed, I pop a bunch of melatonin to enhance my dreams that I try to hunt her down in my dream and smash her in the butt. Just trying to force your own corn? I don't know what his internet connection is like, but I'm thinking he could do this a lot easier. There are certain links. 
Is part of his issue that he can only be attracted to people he sees in real life? Story 10. I once self-stimulated to a friend's panties. We were sharing a room in a hostel, and I came back drunk one night and saw her panties on her bed. She's a stone-cold fox, and I couldn't help myself. I took a picture of her panties positioned on the bed, snagged them, and went to town on myself in the bathroom. I returned them as perfectly as I could, and she was none the wiser. It's probably the most pathetic thing I've ever done. Story 11. I live with the mother of my child and sleep in the same bed with her. I basically spend all my time with her. We act like a perfect family, and nobody would even suspect that we weren't in love. But we haven't had spicy time or even kissed since my son was born. Six years ago. Edit. We did love each other very much at one time. Now we're more like friends, but not like really good friends. I think we're only still together for my son. He's an awesome little gentleman, and we did a kick-butt job raising him. Neither of us could disappoint him by splitting up. We're happy as parents, but neither of us are happy as a couple. I'm not happy, but it's the life I chose to live. Story 12. A couple months ago, I decided to take on the challenge of orgasming without touching. I was doing pretty good and was on the verge of orgasming, but then I just peed myself instead. Is this the same guy that takes mental pictures of girls he sees on the street? Is he just trying to train himself to completely automate the process or something? How do you go from being on the verge of orgasming to peeing? If anything, peeing prevents orgasming at all, especially if you've got a full bladder. Story 13. I thought I was bit by a deadly spider conveniently on my vag. I had a panic attack and went to the ER because I was obviously dying. So I'm laying on a bed in the ER with my legs spread and no pants, and the nurse is like, Yep, definitely an ingrown hair. Edit. Thanks for the gold. Story 14. Up until I was 18, I believed that if your hand was bigger than your face, you had cancer because my cousin never finished the prank on me. He told me this when I was nine. Story 15. I'm a guy, and I pluck my pubes with my fingers. It's so freaking addictive. My groin looks smooth as hell, but I have to pluck the tiniest of hairs if I spot one. My index finger has like a permanent dent or hard skin because of it. Edit. <laughs> Everyone thinks I have OCD, which is funny because I couldn't disagree more. I might have exaggerated when I said I have to pluck the tiniest of hairs if I spot one. It's just that when I'm sitting or laying around doing nothing, my hand naturally gravitates towards that area and I just start plucking whatever's there, which by now are all very tiny hairs that are starting to grow back because I keep plucking them. Maybe he doesn't have OCD, but I think we can agree that he is obsessed. I think it's also just habit. I wonder if he's ever tried actually waxing the area. Just get it done in one fell swoop or swipe, as the case may be. Story 16. One time in college, I really liked this girl and wanted to tell her as much. On Wednesdays, we went to the on-campus club to dance, and I was going to tell her there and ask her out. I told her I wanted to talk to her that night. I told her friends I was going to tell her. I got dressed to the nines. Then I lost my nerve. I kept running back to the dorm and making a screwdriver. Then again, then two then three more, and I passed the hell out in the dorm common room. One of my friends came and got me, cleaned me up, and walked me to my room to put me to bed. The next morning, when I went downstairs to nurse a hangover and play Mario Kart with people, everyone tried to dance around telling me something. Finally, her best friend kind of blurted it out. The friend who put me to bed and didn't know I had feelings for the girl made out with her on the dance floor that night because she was really lonely. They've been together since. Story 17. I just found out that the fetus I'm pregnant with never developed a brain and will expire upon birth. Heart still beats because it has brainstem. I can't terminate because I'm past 20 weeks. Now I just hope every day that it will expire so I don't have to feel it move anymore. Story 18. I used to hump the floor as a kid before I knew what self-stimulation was. I had no idea why it felt so good. 
I was shocked and concerned the first time ejaculate came out. But that didn't slow me down. Wouldn't slow down a lot of people either. I wonder when this guy actually had any kind of uh, health classes at school. The kind of stuff where they explain those things. It doesn't sound like his parents were explaining anything to him. At least not any time soon. Story 19. My ex and I have been broken up for eight months. I just saw on Facebook he was in a new relationship and is visiting her in North Carolina right now. He's from Ontario. One of the reasons we broke up was because of long distance. I'm from Michigan, and when I saw that update, I pretty much immediately burst into tears, and I've been devastated the rest of the day. And that is what I won't tell anyone in real life. Story 20. Despite it often feeling very, very good, it's difficult for me to finish during spicy time. My ex used to think it was their fault, but I'm pretty sure it's my anxiety medicine, which just makes me not want to take it anymore. Story 21. Up until a while ago, I believed frogs weren't real because my parents told me it was a conspiracy when I was really young. I never questioned it and always thought the teachers were stupid for buying into that frogs are real stuff. But they aren't a conspiracy, and my parents played a long, evil joke. Are these parents just jokesters all around? That's kinda evil. I agree. What's the end game here? This poor kid, he's probably humiliated by his friends at school all the time. Was there ever a parent-teacher conference with these two? It would be really messed up if there was. The parents told the teachers they were playing a joke and the teachers bought into it. That would be awful for this kid. Story 22. I'm a total doormat. No matter what anyone does to me, I'll always help them. I will give the last dollar in my bank account to the guy who just shanked me in the kidney to get out of prison. It's really embarrassing to have the constant feeling that I'm nothing and I need to give everyone everything to feel even kind of validated. Story 23. When I was 20, I had a dream. A really, really long one. I dreamt of a girl my age. I met her at a bar. We talked. We liked each other. Over time, it grew into something bigger and I was really happy with her. I woke up suddenly. Like, seriously, in my dream, it all took months Looking back at it, I'm still not sure how it worked because it's as hazy as memories. But it influenced me more than a dream should. To this day, three years later, whenever I'm in public, I look around hoping I might just meet her. It makes me cynical and sad pretty much overnight. Story 24. Whenever I'm out in public making small talk with a stranger, i.e. cashier, waiter, fellow customer... I will spread a false yet believable rumor about something in our area to see if it will spread around town. I've had about a dozen people emphatically tell me about a hogwash rumor that I myself have started. I guess I could tell people about it, but it's just too much dang fun. I feel like a lame version of the Joker. How big is this town? Or is it really small? If he lived in a place like Los Angeles and this stuff kept getting back to him... I'd be a, probably a little impressed, but I don't think he lives there. What kind of rumors is he spreading? I want to know what he's specifically talking about. Story 25. I was 14 and was on my period during a week at camp. I was still embarrassed about the whole menstrual cycle thing, so I never made it to the bathroom discreetly to change my pad. My friend's mom drove a bunch of us home, and on the way, I noticed I had leaked all over the seat. I was also the first one dropped off at home. I got out of the van and didn't look back. Story 26. When I was younger and one of my TV shows would come on, Caillou, Bernstein Bears, Tom and Jerry, etc., I'd strip down naked, no matter who was watching, and do laps in my house screaming the name of the show. This lasted until I was eight. Story 27. Throwaway account for even more secrecy. I like to plan very carefully and I work best when that plan is laid out in paper. When I meet my boyfriend, I decided that I liked him and did a lot of research about him. I created dossiers on each of his previous girlfriends, trying to discern what his type is. No one who knows me would imagine that I'd do something like that. I'm a total normal-appearing person. I try to rationalize what I did as a way to deal with the nervousness that comes with a crush. 
We've been together for a year now, and obviously what I did is totally irrelevant at this point. It's hard to explain. It's not as though I wanted to emulate his exes. I simply wanted to be informed. I've never pretended to be anything I'm not, but I also never mentioned this to him. I've destroyed the files and the hard copies, and I'd be absolutely, totally mortified if he somehow found out. I know it seems creepy, but I promise that it's totally harmless. All I did was stalk Facebook and do some Googling, which is normal, but the creation of documents still is and was pretty weird. This is on the cusp as far as I'm concerned. I think if this were a group of girls, it might not be so creepy. Someone dates someone new, everyone gathers around their true best friends and helps them figure out what the deal with this person is. Maybe stalking the exes? It kind of is stalking, yes. Even if it is online. I'm glad they're together, and I'm glad she feels some confidence in herself. Story 28. I imagine this will get buried in all the responses, so that's good. Old co-workers and family know my account. I pooped my pants when I was 21. I was at work. I trusted a fart and I shouldn't have. I ran to the bathroom, locked the door, and first tried to clean my underwear in the sink. In utter desperation, I then tried to flush my underwear down the toilet, as I didn't want to throw it in the trash lest someone sees it. I ripped it into shreds and flushed a piece at a time. Someone knocked, but I said the bathroom was busy. After I cleaned my pants as best I could, I left the bathroom and just went home. I went back the next day and told them I was sick, but I felt like they knew. Edit. At the time this happened, I never thought I could have gotten gold for it. Or any recompense. Thanks for the gold. Story 29. I have a huge man crush on Patrick Dempsey. I've been to quite a few of the same race weekends that he's been at with his race team, and I've gotten to talk to him one-on-one -on -one a few times. He's so down-to-earth and approachable and dreamy. Story 30. I'm 28 and just figured out what I want to do with my life. I don't think most of my friends and family would believe I've been scared witless trying to figure it out since I was probably 18. I know he is having trouble sharing with trusted people. But in the big scheme of things, this isn't so bad. A lot of people don't know what they want to do when they're 18. There are some people in their 50s and 60s that still don't know what to do with themselves. I'm glad this person found some aim in his life and found some direction. Hope he can get some support soon. Story 31. In high school, I was good friends with a girl who was a bit of an attention girl. Okay, a lot of one. But was kind of pretty. One night, when she slept over at my house, we decided to explore, and I went down on her. I'm a straight female, now happily engaged to a dude, but I've never been afraid of testing boundaries. At the time, she praised my skills and seemed rather pleased, and no, she did not reciprocate. That is not the embarrassing part. The embarrassing part is that now she's married with a kid and is an anti-gay Bible thumper who really just gets on my nerves. If I didn't think it would give close family members a heart attack, I would call her out on it. Didn't hate the gay so much when you were getting your carpet munched, did you, sweetie? Story 32. My peen is an average six inches when erect, but when flaccid, it shrinks down to crazy small, like receding into my pelvis cavity small. Story 33. When I was about seven or eight years old, I was having some entertainment once while my grandfather was sleeping after the lunch. I tried to be funny and farted in front of his nose. Karma exists. As I tried to fart as many times as possible into his sleeping face, I accidentally pooped my pants. And? Did he wake up? Was there anyone else in the room? And what does a seven or eight year old do with poopy underwear if no one else found out about it? Is it like buried in a yard somewhere? Story 35. I didn't know what a vagina looked like until I was 20 and watched corn for the first time. This comment will be so buried that it'll still be a secret. Story 36. At the time I was 17, and I'm with my first girlfriend, we knew each other for three months. Home alone? Invite her over, 
thinking I was getting laid. So far, so good. Things go according to plan. We play fight when she, by mistake, really scratches my eyelid. I feel a sharp pain and react. I throw her off of me. She hits the table and goes unconscious. You should know I'm the burly type. Afterwards, she didn't remember what happened. To my defense, I told her. Didn't get laid in a long, long time because she told others. Story 37. Sometimes, for a midnight snack, I still like to pour the ramen packet straight into a bowl, sprinkle it with the yummy dust, and eat it hard. The crunchy saltiness is so satisfying. It's my secret shame. Edit. I appreciate the support. I'm still unable to admit the most embarrassing part of my indulgence, which I left out. I'm still too ashamed. Edit 2. Okay, fine, here we go. I don't even know how to explain it, but when I was a kid, I found it satisfying to not swallow the hard stuff after I chew it up and make a big ball of dough, I guess, from that. Sprinkle it with yummy dust, insert some fresh crunches, and it becomes this warm ball of soft and crunchy dough. And I still do it. I know it's totally disgusting. I'm a monster. Seems like something a freaking bird would do. But it's really good. And it's not entirely regurgitated, just spat out. I can't justify it anymore. It's horrific. But it's also delicious, and I eat it in the dark in my basement in the middle of the night a few times a year. Then I chug a huge glass of water and figure that, to my stomach, it's all the same, and I just ate a bowl of soup like a normal human being. Judge way. Story 38. One time at dinner, I saw a menu item that had peppercorns. Steak and peppercorns. Sounded good. I was out with my husband, and I said, that sounds good, and ordered it. It came out, and the steak was covered with these hard-type beads. I tried one. It was spicy, like pepper. I asked the server who had come back what the hell was on my steak. Ma'am, those are peppercorns. My response was, Where the hell is the corn? These taste like pure pepper. My husband started laughing so hard he was crying. The server kindly explained what peppercorns were. I was so embarrassed. Story 39. When I'm alone, sometimes I get really emotional about my grandmother, who was like a mother to me. My dad raised me and my bro on his own. She perished about two months ago. There are nights where I just sit there and just listen to emotional songs non-stop and cry a little bit. I miss her so much. Story 40. When I was a kid, my brother convinced me ants make you grow faster. I was obsessed with being tall when I was little. I must have ate well over a thousand ants from age five to seven. My mother caught me eating one once and informed me that they do not make you taller and that I was, in fact, a huge, total idiot. I'm 6'3 now, though, so maybe they do work? Story 41. I have never been more nervous and scared in my life than when I accidentally walked into the woman's washroom at the end of a Leafs game before the final buzzer. I walked into an empty room, grabbed a stall, and started my business. Buzzer sounds and the surge of high heels start bombarding the floor around me. I quickly realize my mistake, yet thought to myself, should I wait them out? Maybe I should run? I remembered my wife had to use the bathroom as well. She was most likely in the room with me as I sat. I decided I had to run for it. I finished my task, swung open the stall door to the side of a massive line right out the door. Head down the whole way. I was so scared, so nervous I would get arrested or beat up or found by my wife. The worst part came as I was almost clear of the line. A woman yelled at me as loud as she could, You forgot to wash! Don't tell anyone. Story 42. I'm going to preface this with two things. One, I'm on my phone, so formatting may be iffy. Two, I have diagnosed crippling social anxiety issues. Almost a year ago, I lived out of my car for two weeks because I was afraid to ask for help. I missed a rent payment by two days and then for two months was too embarrassed, doesn't feel like the right word, but it gets the point across, to fix it. When the notice got posted to my door, it just got worse and worse. 
I was too panicky to be in the apartment, too panicky to ask for help, and definitely too panicky to let anyone know I had messed up. At that point, I had been off my meds for three months. It was worse than it had ever been. I had already told my parents that I wasn't planning on renewing the lease and was going to stay with them until I found somewhere slightly nicer. And so I killed two weeks living in my car, showering at my cousin's when I went over there to hang out, and generally doing nothing useful. Moral of the story? Being sleepy occasionally is an acceptable side effect of anxiety meds. Also, don't go off your meds if they're working. Even if your friends all swear by the power of recreational substance use, it's not the same. Adverse reactions may apply. Story 43. I don't know how to math. I can do basic addition, subtraction, and multiplication, but that's it. I learned it, of course, throughout all of school, but I seriously forgot it all. I don't even know how to divide. I have to use a calculator. And if decimals are involved, I'm completely in trouble. I'm 31. Story 44. When I was about 22, I got too drunk to drive once. Like, really, really drunk, and I couldn't find a ride or take a taxi because I was living with parents at the time who lived 15 miles outside of town in the middle of nowhere. Instead of calling them for a ride home like a normal human being, I hid my wallet, cell phone, and keys in an alley, and then I punched myself in the face like six times really, really hard. I walked like four blocks to a gas station and had them call the police and tell them that I was mugged. Like 15 cops showed up and even had dogs to try and get a scent off the fictional attackers. They were even looking for footprints and said that they thought they might have a lead. A cop gave me a ride home and told my parents what happened. I never admitted to anyone what really happened because I became impregnated by the sympathy party. I got free drinks from everyone around town for like a month. Story 45. I bought an electric guitar with every intention of learning how to play. Instead, when I'm home alone, I just turn my music up super loud and strum the hell out of it. I rock my bedroom mirror air time. Story 46. For me, online forums are more than just a diversion. For all my years of mandatory schooling, remaining silent in the classroom, this is like finally being able to raise my hand. Being able to express myself and have my existence acknowledged, brief exchange by brief exchange, is thrilling and new to me. Story 47. I love ASMR, but I don't think that's something I could talk to my friends and family about in public. Story 48. I was talking to this girl and our conversation went to fetishes and I told her I had a semi-fetish with long socks. We laughed it off until the next day when she texted me, Guess what I found? It was her legs and feet in red long socks. I saved that picture and told her it looked good. The real truth? I don't think I'd ever gotten as aroused as I did that moment. I saved that picture and self-stimulated off to that picture for such a long time. Mmm. So I guess I admit that I have self-stimulated frequently to a picture of feet inside of red long socks. Self-stimulating to the picture is not embarrassing. I see no mention of you acting on what was a blatant signal that she wanted to get pounded while wearing the socks. If that's how it happened, that's what should embarrass you. Story 49. You broke my heart for as long as it took me to read this. That's an impact. You don't realize the impact you make daily. I'm sorry if you're going through this. You can always PM me. I'm uh, always here online, <laughs> so feel free. If you ever just want to shoot the breeze, talk about your day, whatever, dude. Edit. This is an open invitation for anyone feeling cruddy ever. Story 50. For like a month, I followed that pacifier necklace fad in school. It arrived at my school much later than everywhere else, and my group of friends started doing it, and I followed. I found it a couple months ago, and realized I had completely blocked it from my mind. Story 51. When I was about six years old, female, my sister, eight, and I used to play massage, and then, just like the corns, it transitioned into spicy time. It was consensual on both ends, and it happened for about two years, until she started going through puberty. 
I'm now 16, she's 18 and has a fiancé. He's the only other person in the world besides us that knows about this. I will never tell another living soul. Except y'all. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.